The phrase pre-Islamic Arabia refers to the Arabian Peninsula prior to Muhammad's preaching of Islam in the early 7th century CE. Some of the settled communities developed into distinctive civilizations, and are limited to archaeological evidence, accounts written outside of Arabia and Arab oral traditions later recorded by Islamic scholars. Among the most prominent civilizations were the Thamud which arose around 3000 BCE and lasted to about 300 CE and Dilmun which arose around the end of the 4th millennium and lasted to about 600 CE. Additionally, from the beginning of the 1st millennium BCE, southern Arabia was the home to a number of kingdoms such as the Sabaeans and eastern Arabia was inhabited by Semitic speakers who presumably migrated from the southwest, such as the so-called Samad population. A few nodal points were controlled by Iranian Parthian and Sasanian colonists. Pre-Islamic religion in Arabia consisted of indigenous polytheistic beliefs, ancient Arabian Christianity, Nestorian Christianity, Judaism, Zoroastrianism and Romanism. Studies <inaudible> 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 Scientific studies of pre-Islamic Arabs starts with the Arabists of the early 19th century when they managed to decipher epigraphic Old South Arabian 10th century BCE, Ancient North Arabian 6th century BCE and other writings of pre-Islamic Arabia. Thus, studies are no longer limited to the written traditions, which are not local due to the lack of surviving Arab historians' accounts of that era. The paucity of material is compensated for by written sources from other cultures, such as Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, etc., so it was not known in great detail. From the 3rd century CE, Arabian history becomes more tangible with the rise of the Himyarite, and with the appearance of the Katanites in the Levant and the gradual assimilation of the Nabataeans by the Katanites in the early centuries CE, a pattern of expansion exceeded in the Muslim conquests of the 7th century. Sources of history include archaeological evidence, foreign accounts and oral traditions later recorded by Islamic scholars—especially in the pre-Islamic poems and the Hadith, plus a number of ancient Arab documents that survived into medieval times when portions of them were cited or recorded. Archaeological exploration in the Arabian Peninsula has been sparse but fruitful, and many ancient sites have been identified by modern excavations. The most recent detailed study of pre-Islamic Arabia is Arabs and Empires Before Islam, published by Oxford University Press in 2015. This book collects a diverse range of ancient texts and inscriptions for the history especially of the northern region during this time period. Topic: <laughs> Prehistoric to Iron Age. Ubaid period 5300 BCE could have originated in eastern Arabia. Um and NAR culture 2000 BCE. SABR culture 2000 BCE. Wadi Suq culture 1900 to 1300 BCE LIZQ Rumela equals early iron age 1300 to 300 BCE Samad period late iron age C 100 BCE C.300 CE Recent pre-Islamic period C 150 BCE C 325 CE Topic Megan, Midian, and Ad. Megan is attested as the name of a trading partner of the Sumerians. It is often assumed to have been located in Oman. The Aadids established themselves in South Arabia, modern-day Yemen, settling to the east of the Khatan tribe. They established the Kingdom of Ad around the 10th century BCE to the 3rd century CE. The Ad nation were known to the Greeks and Egyptians. Claudius Ptolemy Geographus 2nd century CE refers to the area as the land of the Ioberte, a region which legend later referred to as Ubar. The origin of the Midianites has not been established. Because of the Mycenaean motifs on what is referred to as Midianite pottery, some scholars including George Mendenhall, Peter Parr, and Baino Rothenberg have suggested that the Midianites were originally sea peoples who migrated from the Aegean region and imposed themselves on a pre-existing Semitic stratum. The question of the origin of the Midianites still remains open. Topic. Overview of major kingdoms The history of pre-Islamic Arabia before the rise of Islam in the 630s is not known in great detail. 
Archaeological exploration in the Arabian Peninsula has been sparse, indigenous written sources are limited to the many inscriptions and coins from southern Arabia. Existing material consists primarily of written sources from other traditions such as Egyptians, Greeks, Persians, Romans, etc. and oral traditions later recorded by Islamic scholars. Many small kingdoms prospered from Red Sea and Indian Ocean trade. Major kingdoms included the Sabaeans, Asin, Himyar and the Nabataeans. The first known inscriptions of the Kingdom of Hadramaut are known from the 8th century BC. It was first referenced by an outside civilization in an old Sabaic inscription of Karabil Wattar from the early 7th century BC, in which the king of Hadramat, Yada backquote il, is mentioned as being one of his allies. Dilmun appears first in Sumerian cuneiform clay tablets dated to the end of 4th millennium BC, found in the temple of goddess Inanna, in the city of Uruk. The adjective Dilmun refers to a type of axe and one specific official. In addition, there are lists of rations of wool issued to people connected with Dilmun. The Sabaeans were an ancient people speaking an old South Arabian language who lived in what is today Yemen, in southwest Arabian Peninsula, from 2000 BC to the 8th century BC. Some Sabaeans also lived in Deept, located in northern Ethiopia and Eritrea, due to their hegemony over the Red Sea. They lasted from the early 2nd millennium to the 1st century BC. In the 1st century BC it was conquered by the Himyarites, but after the disintegration of the first Himyarite empire of the kings of Saba and du Raidan the Middle Sabaean kingdom reappeared in the early 2nd century. It was finally conquered by the Himyarites in the late 3rd century. The ancient kingdom of Asin with a capital at Hagar Yahar in the Wadi Marka, to the south of the Wadi Bayan, is now marked by a tell or artificial mound, which is locally named Hagar Asfal. Once it was one of the most important small kingdoms of South Arabia. The city seems to have been destroyed in the 7th century BC by the king and Mukarib of Saba Karabil Wattar, according to a Sabaean text that reports the victory in terms that attest to its significance for the Sabaeans. The Himyar was a state in ancient South Arabia dating from 110 BC. It conquered neighboring Saba in c. 25 BC, Kataban in c. 200 AD and Hadramat c. 300 AD. Its political fortunes relative to Saba changed frequently until it finally conquered the Sabaean kingdom around 280 AD. It was the dominant state in Arabia until 525 AD. The economy was based on agriculture. Foreign trade was based on the export of frankincense and myrrh. For many years it was also the major intermediary linking East Africa and the Mediterranean world. This trade largely consisted of exporting ivory from Africa to be sold in the Roman Empire. Ships from Himyar regularly traveled the East African coast, and the state also exerted a considerable amount of political control of the trading cities of East Africa. The Nabataean origins remain obscure. On the similarity of sounds, Jerome suggested a connection with the tribe Nabaioth mentioned in Genesis, but modern historians are cautious about an early Nabataean history. The Babylonian captivity that began in 586 BC opened a power vacuum in Judah, and as Edomites moved into Judean grazing lands, Nabataean inscriptions began to be left in Edomite territory earlier than 312 BC, when they were attacked at Petra without success by Antigonus I. The first definite appearance was in 312 BC, when Hieronymus of Cardia, a Seleucid officer, mentioned the Nabataeans in a battle report. In 50 BC, the Greek historian Diodorus Siculus cited Hieronymus in his report, and added the following, "...just as the Seleucids had tried to subdue them, so the Romans made several attempts to get their hands on that lucrative trade." Petra Ursella was the ancient capital of Edom. The Nabataeans must have occupied the old Edomite country, and succeeded to its commerce, after the Edomites took advantage of the Babylonian captivity to press forward into southern Judea. This migration, the date of which cannot be determined, also made them masters of the shores of the Gulf of Aqaba and the important harbour of Elath. Here, according to Agatharchides, they were for a time very troublesome, as wreckers and pirates, to the reopened commerce between Egypt and the east, until they were chastised by the Ptolemaic rulers of Alexandria. The Lakhmid kingdom was founded by the Lakhm tribe that immigrated out of Yemen in the 2nd century and ruled by the Banu Lakhm, hence the name given it. It was formed of a group of Arab Christians who lived in southern Iraq, and made al hira their capital in 266. The founder of the dynasty was Amr and the son Imru al converted to Christianity. Gradually the whole city converted to that faith. 
Imru al Qais dreamt of a unified and independent Arab kingdom and, following that dream, he seized many cities in Arabia. The Ghassanids were a group of South Arabian Christian tribes that emigrated in the early 3rd century from Yemen to the Horan in southern Syria, Jordan and the Holy Land where they intermarried with Hellenized Roman settlers and Greek-speaking early Christian communities. The Ghassanid emigration has been passed down in the rich oral tradition of southern Syria. It is said that the Ghassanids came from the city of Marib in Yemen. There was a dam in this city, however one year there was so much rain that the dam was carried away by the ensuing flood. Thus the people there had to leave. The inhabitants emigrated seeking to live in less arid lands and became scattered far and wide. The proverb, They were scattered like the people of Saba, refers to that exodus in history. The emigrants were from the southern Arab tribe of Azd of the Kalan branch of Qatani tribes. Eastern Arabia The sedentary people of pre-Islamic Eastern Arabia were mainly Aramaic speakers and to some degree Persian speakers while Syriac functioned as a liturgical language. In pre-Islamic times, the population of Eastern Arabia consisted of Christianized Arabs including Abd al-Qis, Aramean Christians, Persian-speaking Zoroastrians and Jewish agriculturalists. According to Robert Bertram Surgent, the Baharna may be the Arabized descendants of converts from the original population of Christians Aramaeans, Jews and ancient Persians Magis inhabiting the island and cultivated coastal provinces of eastern Arabia at the time of the Arab conquest. Other archaeological assemblages cannot be clearly brought clearly into larger context, such as the Samad Late Iron Age. Zoroastrianism was also present in eastern Arabia. The Zoroastrians of Eastern Arabia were known as Majus in pre Islamic times. The sedentary dialects of Eastern Arabia, including Barani Arabic, were influenced by Akkadian, Aramaic, and Syriac languages. <laughs> Dilmun The Dilmun civilization was an important trading center which, at the height of its power, controlled the Persian Gulf trading routes. The Sumerians regarded Dilmun as holy land. Dilmun is regarded as one of the oldest ancient civilizations in the Middle East. The Sumerians described Dilmun as a paradise garden in the Epic of Gilgamesh. The Sumerian tale of the Garden Paradise of Dilmun may have been an inspiration for the Garden of Eden story. Dilmun appears first in Sumerian cuneiform clay tablets dated to the end of 4th millennium BCE, found in the temple of goddess Inanna, in the city of Uruk. The adjective Dilmun is used to describe a type of axe and one specific official. In addition, there are lists of rations of wool issued to people connected with Dilmun. Dilmun was an important trading center from the late 4th millennium to 1800 BCE. Dilmun was very prosperous during the first 300 years of the second millennium. Dilmun's commercial power began to decline between 2000 BCE and 1800 BCE because piracy flourished in the Persian Gulf. In 600 BCE, the Babylonians and later the Persians added Dilmun to their empires. The Dilmun civilization was the center of commercial activities linking traditional agriculture of the land with maritime trade between diverse regions as the Indus Valley and Mesopotamia in the early period and China and the Mediterranean in the later period from the 3rd to the 16th century CE. Dilmun was mentioned in two letters dated to the reign of Berna Bariush II, c. 1370 BCE, recovered from Nippur during the Kassite dynasty of Babylon. These letters were from a provincial official, Eli Ipazra, in Dilmun to his friend and Lil Kidini in Mesopotamia. The names referred to are Akkadian. These letters and other documents, hint at an administrative relationship between Dilmun and Babylon at that time. Following the collapse of the Kassite dynasty, Mesopotamian documents make no mention of Dilmun with the exception of Assyrian inscriptions dated to 1250 BCE which proclaimed the Assyrian king to be king of Dilmun and Mela'a. Assyrian inscriptions recorded tribute from Dilmun. There are other Assyrian inscriptions during the 1st millennium BCE indicating Assyrian sovereignty over Dilmun. Dilmun was also later on controlled by the Kassite dynasty in Mesopotamia. Dilmun, sometimes described as the place where the sun rises and the land of the living, is the scene of some versions of the Sumerian creation myth, and the place where the deified Sumerian hero of the flood, Unapishtim Ziasudra, was taken by the gods to live forever. Thorkild Jacobson's translation of the Eridu Genesis calls it, Mount Dilmun, 
which he locates as a faraway, half mythical place. Dilmun is also described in the epic story of Enki and Ninyorsak as the site at which the creation occurred. The promise of Enki to Ninyorsak, the Earth Mother. For Dilmun, the land of my lady's heart, I will create long waterways, rivers and canals, whereby water will flow to quench the thirst of all beings and bring abundance to all that lives. Ninlil, the Sumerian goddess of air and south wind had her home in Dilmun. It is also featured in the Epic of Gilgamesh. However, in the early epic, Inmerkur and the Lord of Arata, the main events, which center on Inmerkur's construction of the ziggurats in Uruk and Eridu, are described as taking place in a world before Dilmun had yet been settled. Topic: <laughs> Jera. Jera Arabic, Jerha was an ancient city of eastern Arabia, on the west side of the Persian Gulf. More accurately, the ancient city of Jera has been determined to have existed near or under the present fort of Ukare. This fort is 50 miles northeast of al Hasa in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia. This site was first proposed by R. E. Cheesman in 1924. Jera and Ukare are archaeological sites on the eastern coast of the Arabian Peninsula. Prior to Jera, the area belonged to the Dilmun civilization, which was conquered by the Assyrian Empire in 709 BCE. Jera was the center of an Arab kingdom from approximately 650 BCE to circa 300 CE. The kingdom was attacked by Antiochus III the Great in 205-204 BCE, though it seems to have survived. It is currently unknown exactly when Jera fell, but the area was under Sassanid Persian control after 300 CE. Jera was described by Strabo as inhabited by Chaldean exiles from Babylon, who built their houses of salt and repaired them by the application of salt water. Pliny the Elder Lust. Nat. V. 32 says it was five miles in circumference with towers built of square blocks of salt. Jera was destroyed by the Karmatians in the end of the 9th century where all inhabitants were massacred 300,000. It was two miles from the Persian Gulf near current-day Hafuf. The researcher Abdulkalik al-Janbi argued in his book that Jera was most likely the ancient city of Hajar, located in modern-day al-Ahsa, Saudi Arabia. Al-Janbi's theory is the most widely accepted one by modern scholars, although there are some difficulties with this argument given that al-Ahsa is 60 km inland and thus less likely to be the starting point for a trader's route, making the location within the archipelago of islands comprising the modern kingdom of Bahrain, particularly the main island of Bahrain itself, another possibility. Various other identifications of the site have been attempted, Jean-Baptiste Bourguignon d'Anville choosing Katif, Karsten Niebuhr preferring Kuwait and sea force suggesting the ruins at the head of the bay behind the islands of Bahrain. Tylos Bahrain was referred to by the Greeks as Tylos, the center of pearl trading, when Nearchus came to discover it serving under Alexander the Great. From the 6th to 3rd century BCE Bahrain was included in Persian Empire by Achaemenians, an Iranian dynasty. The Greek admiral Nearchus is believed to have been the first of Alexander's commanders to visit this islands, and he found a verdant land that was part of a wide trading network. He recorded, that in the island of Tylos, situated in the Persian Gulf, are large plantations of cotton tree, from which are manufactured clothes called sindones, a very different degrees of value, some being costly, others less expensive. The use of these is not confined to India, but extends to Arabia. The Greek historian, Theophrastus, states that much of the islands were covered in these cotton trees and that Tylos was famous for exporting walking canes engraved with emblems that were customarily carried in Babylon. Ares was also worshipped by the ancient Baharna and the Greek colonists. It is not known whether Bahrain was part of the Seleucid Empire, although the archaeological site at Qalat al Bahrain has been proposed as a Seleucid base in the Persian Gulf. Alexander had planned to settle the eastern shores of the Persian Gulf with Greek colonists, and although it is not clear that this happened on the scale he envisaged, Tylos was very much part of the Hellenized world. The language of the upper classes was Greek, although Aramaic was in everyday use, while Zeus was worshipped in the form of the Arabian sun god Shams. Tylos even became the site of Greek athletic contests. The name Tylos is thought to be a Hellenization of the Semitic, Tilmen from Dilmen. The term Tylos was commonly used for the islands until Ptolemy Geographia when the inhabitants are referred to as Thilawanoi. 
Some place names in Bahrain go back to the Tylos era, for instance, the residential suburb of Arad in Maharak, is believed to originate from Arados, the ancient Greek name for Maharak Island. Herodotus's account written c. 440 BCE refers to the Io and Europa myths, history, I. 1. According to the Persians best informed in history, the Phoenicians began the quarrel. These people, who had formerly dwelt on the shores of the Erythraean Sea the eastern part of the Arabia Peninsula, having migrated to the Mediterranean and settled in the parts which they now inhabit, began at once, they say, to adventure on long voyages, freighting their vessels with the wares of Egypt and Assyria. The Greek historian Strabo believed the Phoenicians originated from eastern Arabia. Herodotus also believed that the homeland of the Phoenicians was eastern Arabia. This theory was accepted by the 19th-century German classicist Arnold Heeren who said that, "...in the Greek geographers, for instance, we read of two islands, named Tyrus or Tylos, and Arad, Bahrain, which boasted that they were the mother country of the Phoenicians, and exhibited relics of Phoenician temples." The people of Tyre in particular have long maintained Persian Gulf origins, and the similarity in the words, "...tylos," and "...tyre," has been commented upon. However, there is little evidence of occupation at all in Bahrain during the time when such migration had supposedly taken place. With the waning of Seleucid Greek power, Tylos was incorporated into Kerosene or Messenian, the state founded in what today is Kuwait by Hyspaezines in 127 BCE. A building inscriptions found in Bahrain indicate that Hyspaezines occupied the islands, and it also mentioned his wife, Thalassia. Parthian and Sassanid From the 3rd century BCE to arrival of Islam in the 7th century CE, Eastern Arabia was controlled by two other Iranian dynasties of the Parthians and Sassanids. By about 250 BCE, the Seleucids lost their territories to Parthians, an Iranian tribe from Central Asia. The Parthian dynasty brought the Persian Gulf under their control and extended their influence as far as Oman. Because they needed to control the Persian Gulf trade route, the Parthians established garrisons in the southern coast of Persian Gulf. In the 3rd century CE, the Sassanids succeeded the Parthians and held the area until the rise of Islam four centuries later. Ardashir, the first ruler of the Iranian Sasanians dynasty, marched down the Persian Gulf to Oman and Bahrain and defeated Sanatruk, or Satiran, probably the Parthian governor of eastern Arabia. He appointed his son Shapur I as governor of eastern Arabia. Shapur constructed a new city there and named it Bataan Ardashir after his father. At this time, Eastern Arabia incorporated the southern Sassanid province covering the Persian Gulf's southern shore plus the archipelago of Bahrain. The southern province of the Sassanids was subdivided into three districts of Hagar Hafuf, Saudi Arabia, Bataan Ardashir Al-Khatif province, Saudi Arabia, and Mishmahig Maharak, Bahrain, also referred to as Samahij in Middle Persian, Pahlavi means, you fish which included the Bahrain archipelago that was earlier called Aval. The name, meaning you fish, would appear to suggest that the name, Tulos, is related to Hebrew, Tala, Lamb Strong's 2924. Topic. Beth Katre The Christian name used for the region encompassing northeastern Arabia was Beth Katre, or the Isles. The name translates to region of the Qataruses in Syriac. It included Bahrain, Tarout Island, Al Khat, Al Hasa, and Qatar. By the 5th century, Beth Katre was a major center for Nestorian Christianity, which had come to dominate the southern shores of the Persian Gulf. As a sect, the Nestorians were often persecuted as heretics by the Byzantine Empire, but Eastern Arabia was outside the empire's control, offering some safety. Several notable Nestorian writers originated from Beth Katre, including Isaac of Nineveh, Dadisho Katreya, Gabriel of Qatar and Ahob of Qatar. Christianity's significance was diminished by the arrival of Islam in Eastern Arabia by 628. In 676, the bishops of Beth Katre stopped attending synods, although the practice of Christianity persisted in the region until the late 9th century. The dioceses of Beth Katre did not form an ecclesiastical province, except for a short period during the mid to late 7th century. They were instead subject to the Metropolitan of Fars. <laughs> Beth Mazanay 
Oman and the United Arab Emirates comprised the ecclesiastical province known as Beth Mazineh. The name was derived from Mazin, the Persian name for Oman and the United Arab Emirates. <laughs> South Arabian kingdoms Kingdom of Ma'in, 7th century BCE, 1st century BCE. During Manian rule, the capital was at Karna, now known as Sada. Their other important city was Yathil, now known as Barakish. The Manian kingdom was centered in northwestern Yemen, with most of its cities lying along Wadi Madab. Manian inscriptions have been found far afield of the Kingdom of Mayan, as far away as Al Ula in northwestern Saudi Arabia and even on the island of Delos and Egypt. It was the first of the Yemeni kingdoms to end, and the Manian language died around 100 CE. Topic: <laughs> Kingdom of Saba, 9th century BCE 275 CE. During Sabaean rule, trade and agriculture flourished, generating much wealth and prosperity. The Sabaean kingdom was located in Yemen, and its capital, Marib, is located near what is now Yemen's modern capital, Sana'a. According to South Arabian tradition, the eldest son of Noah, Shem, founded the city of Marib. During Sabaean rule, Yemen was called Arabia Felix by the Romans, who were impressed by its wealth and prosperity. The Roman Emperor Augustus sent a military expedition to conquer the Arabia Felix under the command of Aelius Gallus. After an unsuccessful siege of Marib, the Roman general retreated to Egypt, while his fleet destroyed the port of Aden in order to guarantee the Roman merchant route to India. The success of the kingdom was based on the cultivation and trade of spices and aromatics including frankincense and myrrh. These were exported to the Mediterranean, India, and Abyssinia, where they were greatly prized by many cultures, using camels on routes through Arabia, and to India by sea. During the 8th and 7th century BCE, there was a close contact of cultures between the Kingdom of Mount in northern Ethiopia and Eritrea and Saba. Though the civilization was indigenous and the royal inscriptions were written in a sort of proto ethio semitic there were also some Sabaean immigrants in the kingdom as evidenced by a few of the D Mount inscriptions. Agriculture in Yemen thrived during this time due to an advanced irrigation system which consisted of large water tunnels in mountains, and dams. The most impressive of these earthworks, known as the Marib Dam, was built ca. 700 BCE and provided irrigation for about 25,000 acres 101 square kilometers of land and stood for over a millennium, finally collapsing in 570 CE after centuries of neglect. <laughs> Kingdom of Hadramaut 8th century BCE 3rd century CE The first known inscriptions of Hadramaut are known from the 8th century BCE. It was first referenced by an outside civilization in an old Sabaic inscription of Karabil Wattar from the early 7th century BCE, in which the king of Hadramat, Yada il, is mentioned as being one of his allies. When the Manians took control of the caravan routes in the 4th century BCE, however, Hadramat became one of its confederates, probably because of commercial interests. It later became independent and was invaded by the growing Yemeni kingdom of Himyar toward the end of the 1st century BCE, but it was able to repel the attack. Hadramat annexed Kataban in the second half of the 2nd century CE, reaching its greatest size. The kingdom of Hadramat was eventually conquered by the Himyarite king Shamar Yerish around 300 CE, unifying all of the South Arabian kingdoms. Kingdom of Asin 8th century BCE 6th century BCE The ancient kingdom of Asin in South Arabia modern Yemen with a capital at Hagar Yahar in the Wadi Marqa to the south of the Wadi Bayan is now marked by a tell or artificial mound which is locally named Hajar Asfal Topic <laughs> Kingdom of Kataban 4th century BCE 3rd century CE Kataban was one of the ancient Yemeni kingdoms which thrived in the Bayan Valley. Like the other southern Arabian kingdoms, it gained great wealth from the trade of frankincense and myrrh incense, which were burned at altars. The capital of Kataban was named Timna and was located on the trade route which passed through the other kingdoms of Hadramat, Saba and Ma'in. The chief deity of the Katabanians was Amm, or uncle, 
and the people called themselves the children of AMM. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom of Himyar, late second century BCE 525 CE. The Himyarites rebelled against Kataban and eventually united southwestern Arabia Hejaz and Yemen, controlling the Red Sea as well as the coasts of the Gulf of Aden. From their capital city, Zafar, the Himyarite kings launched successful military campaigns, and had stretched its domain at times as far east as eastern Yemen and as far north as Najran together with their Kindite allies, it extended maximally as far north as Riyadh and as far east as Yabran. During the 3rd century CE, the South Arabian kingdoms were in continuous conflict with one another. Gadarat GDRT of Aksum began to interfere in South Arabian affairs, signing an alliance with Saba, and a Himyarite text notes that Hadramid and Kataban were also allied against the kingdom. As a result of this, the Aksumite Empire was able to capture the Himyarite capital of Thifar in the first quarter of the 3rd century. However, the alliances did not last, and Shah-Ir Adar of Saba unexpectedly turned on Hadramid, allying again with Aksum and taking its capital in 225. Himyar then allied with Saba and invaded the newly taken Aksumite territories, retaking Thifar, which had been under the control of Gadarat's son Bagat, and pushing Aksum back into the Tihama. The standing relief image of a crowned man, is taken to be a representation possibly of the Jewish king Malkakarib Yuha Min or more likely the Christian Isimafeos Samu Yafa. Topic. Aksumite occupation of Yemen 525-570 CE The Aksumite intervention is connected with Du Nuwas, a Himyarite king who changed the state religion to Judaism and began to persecute the Christians in Yemen. Outraged, Caleb, the Christian king of Aksum with the encouragement of the Byzantine emperor Justin I invaded and annexed Yemen. The Aksumites controlled Himyar and attempted to invade Mecca in the year 570 CE. Eastern Yemen remained allied to the Sassanids via tribal alliances with the Lakhmids, which later brought the Sassanid army into Yemen, ending the Aksumite period. Topic. Sassanid period 570 The Persian king Khosrau I sent troops under the command of Varas Persian, Aspid Wars who helped the semi-legendary Saif ibn Dhi Yazan to drive the Ethiopian Aksumites out of Yemen. Southern Arabia became a Persian dominion under a Yemenite vassal and thus came within the sphere of influence of the Sassanid Empire. After the demise of the Lakhmids, another army was sent to Yemen, making it a province of the Sassanid Empire under a Persian satrap. Following the death of Khosrau II in 628, the Persian governor in southern Arabia, Baden, converted to Islam and Yemen followed the new religion. <laughs> Hejaz Thamud The Thamud Arabic, Tud was an ancient civilization in Hejaz, which flourished from 3000 BCE to 200 BCE. Recent archaeological work has revealed numerous Thamudic rock writings and pictures. They are mentioned in sources such as the Quran, Old Arabian poetry, Assyrian annals Timudi, in a Greek temple inscription from the northwest Hejaz of 169 CE, in a 5th century Byzantine source and in Old North Arabian graffiti within Tema. They are also mentioned in the victory annals of the Neo-Assyrian king, Sargon II 8th century BCE, who defeated these people in a campaign in northern Arabia. The Greeks also refer to these people as Tamudae, i.e., Thamud, in the writings of Aristotle, Ptolemy, and Pliny. Before the rise of Islam, approximately between 400 to 600 CE, the Thamud totally disappeared. Topic: <laughs> North Arabian Kingdoms. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom of Kedar, 8th century BCE. The most organized of the northern Arabian tribes, at the height of their rule in the 6th century BCE, the kingdom of Kedar spanned a large area between the Persian Gulf and the Sinai. An influential force between the 8th and 4th centuries BCE, Kedarite monarchs are first mentioned in inscriptions from the Assyrian Empire. Some early Kedarite rulers were vassals of that empire, with revolts against Assyria becoming more common in the 7th century BCE. 
It is thought that the Kedarites were eventually subsumed into the Nabataean state after their rise to prominence in the 2nd century CE. Topic: The Achaemenids in Northern Arabia. Achaemenid Arabia corresponded to the lands between Egypt and Mesopotamia, later known as Arabia Petraea. According to Herodotus, Cambyses did not subdue the Arabs when he attacked Egypt in 525 BCE. His successor Darius the Great does not mention the Arabs in the Behistun inscription from the first years of his reign, but mentions them in later texts. This suggests that Darius conquered this part of Arabia. Nabataeans The Nabataeans are not to be found among the tribes that are listed in Arab genealogies because the Nabataean kingdom ended a long time before the coming of Islam. They settled east of the Syro-African rift between the Dead Sea and the Red Sea, that is, in the land that had once been Edom. And although the first sure reference to them dates from 312 BCE, it is possible that they were present much earlier. Petra from the Greek Petra, meaning of rock lies in the Jordan Rift Valley, east of Wadi Bakquot Araba in Jordan about 80 kilometers 50 miles south of the Dead Sea. It came into prominence in the late 1st century BCE through the success of the spice trade. The city was the principal city of ancient Nabataea and was famous above all for two things, its trade and its hydraulic engineering systems. It was locally autonomous until the reign of Trajan, but it flourished under Roman rule. The town grew up around its colonnaded street in the first century and by the middle of the first century had witnessed rapid urbanization. The quarries were probably opened in this period, and there followed virtually continuous building through the first and second centuries CE. <laughs> Roman Arabia There is evidence of Roman rule in northern Arabia dating to the reign of Caesar Augustus 27 BCE to 14 CE. During the reign of Tiberius 14 to 37 CE, the already wealthy and elegant North Arabian city of Palmyra, located along the caravan routes linking Persia with the Mediterranean ports of Roman Syria and Phoenicia, was made part of the Roman province of Syria. The area steadily grew further in importance as a trade route linking Persia, India, China, and the Roman Empire. During the following period of great prosperity, the Arab citizens of Palmyra adopted customs and modes of dress from both the Iranian Parthian world to the east and the Greco-Roman west. In 129, Hadrian visited the city and was so enthralled by it that he proclaimed it a free city and renamed it Palmyra Hadriana. The Roman province of Arabia Petraea was created at the beginning of the 2nd century by Emperor Trajan. It was centered on Petra, but included even areas of northern Arabia under Nabataean control. Recently has been discovered evidence that Roman legions occupied Madain Sala in the Hiyas Mountains area of northwestern Arabia, increasing the extension of the Arabia Petraea province. The desert frontier of Arabia Petraea was called by the Romans the Limes Arabicus. As a frontier province, it included a desert area of northeastern Arabia populated by the nomadic Saraceni. Katanites In Sassanid times, Arabia Petraea was a border province between the Roman and Persian empires, and from the early centuries CE was increasingly affected by South Arabian influence, notably with the Ghassanids migrating north from the 3rd century. The Ghassanids revived the Semitic presence in the then Hellenized Syria. They mainly settled the Horan region and spread to modern Lebanon, Israel, Palestine and Jordan. The Ghassanids held Syria until engulfed by the expansion of Islam. Greeks and Romans referred to all the nomadic population of the desert in the Near East as Arabi. The Greeks called Yemen, Arabia Felix, Happy Arabia. The Romans called the vassal nomadic states within the Roman Empire, Arabia Petraea, after the city of Petra, and called unconquered deserts bordering the empire to the south and east Arabia Magna larger Arabia or Arabia Deserta deserted Arabia. The Lakhmids settled the mid-Tigris region around their capital Al-Hira they ended up allying with the Sassanid against the Ghassanids and the Byzantine Empire. The Lakhmids contested control of the Central Arabian tribes with the Kindites, eventually destroying Kinda in 540 after the fall of Kinda's main ally at the time, Himyar. The Sassanids dissolved the Lakhmid kingdom in 602. 
The Kindites migrated from Yemen along with the Ghassanids and Lakhmids, but were turned back in Bahrain by the Abdul Qais Rabia tribe. They returned to Yemen and allied themselves with the Himyarites who installed them as a vassal kingdom that ruled Central Arabia from Karya Dhat Khal the present day Karyat al -Fau in Central Arabia. They ruled much of the northern, Central Arabian Peninsula until the fall of the Himyarites in 525 CE. <laughs> Central Arabia <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom of Kinda Kinda was an Arab kingdom by the Kinda tribe. The tribe's existence dates back to the 2nd century BCE. The Kindites established a kingdom in Najd in Central Arabia. Unlike the organized states of Yemen, its kings exercised an influence over a number of associated tribes more by personal prestige than by coercive settled authority. Their first capital was Karyat dot Kahil, today known as Karyat al Fau. The Kindites were polytheistic until the 6th century CE, with evidence of rituals dedicated to the idols Athtar and Kahil found in their ancient capital in south central Arabia, present day Saudi Arabia. It is not clear whether they converted to Judaism or remained pagan, but there is a strong archaeological evidence that they were among the tribes in Du Nuwa's forces during the Jewish king's attempt to suppress Christianity in Yemen. They converted to Islam in mid-7th century CE and played a crucial role during the Arab conquest of their surroundings, although some sub-tribes declared apostasy during the Ridda after the death of Muhammad. Ancient South Arabian inscriptions mention a tribe settling in Najd called Kdt, who had a king called Rbt from Dw Tur M the people of Thar, who had sworn allegiance to the king of Saba and Du Radin. Since later Arab genealogists trace Kinda back to a person called Thar ibn Uqayr, modern historians have concluded that this Rbt Dw Twerm Rabbah of the people of Thar must have been a king of Kinda Kdt. .The Musnad inscriptions mention that he was king both of Kdt Kinda and Qhtn Katan. They played a major role in the Himyarite Hadramite War. Following the Himyarite victory, a branch of Kinda established themselves in the Marib region, while the majority of Kinda remained in their lands in Central Arabia. The first classical author to mention Kinda was the Byzantine ambassador Nanozos, who was sent by the Emperor Justinian to the area. He refers to the people in Greek as Kindinoi, Greek Chindinoi, Arabic Kinda, and mentions that they and the tribe of Madinoi, Greek, Madinoi Arabic, Maad, were the two most important tribes in the area in terms of territory and number. He calls the king of Kinda Kaisas Greek, Kaisas Arabic, Keys, the nephew of Aretha Greek, Aretha Arabic, Harith. Topic. People Topic. Sedentary Arabs Sedentary Arabs who inhabited cities or rural areas towns, villages or oases. In pre-Islamic Arabia, most sedentary Arabs were of Arabian origin. Topic: <inaudible> Bedouin tribes. Consisted many of major clans and the tribes were nomadic. The lineage followed through males since the tribes were named after the male ancestors. Topic: <inaudible> Saluba The Saluba were a Hutami tribal group in the northern part of the Arabian Peninsula who were clearly distinguishable from the Arabs. The Saluba maintained a distinctive lifestyle as isolated nomads. The origin of the Saluba is obscure. They have been identified with the Salapayu in Akkadian records, and a clue to their origin is their use of desert kites and game traps, first attested to in around 7000 BCE, which makes them the pre Semitic inhabitants of Arabia. Cambridge linguist and anthropologist Roger Blench sees the Soluba as the last survivors of Paleolithic hunters and salt traders who once dominated Arabia. Those were assimilated in the next wave of humans consisted of cattle herders in the 6th millennium BCE who introduced cows, wild donkeys, sheep and dogs, wild camels and goats. Those peoples may have engaged in trade across the Red Sea with speakers of Cushitic or Nilo-Saharan. In the 3rd and 2nd millennium BCE speakers of Semitic languages arrived from the Near East and marginalized and absorbed the rest. Western travelers reported that the Bedouin did not consider the Saluba to be descendants of Catan. One legend mentions that they originated from ancient Christian groups, possibly crusaders who were taken into slavery by the Bedouin. Werner Kaskill criticizes the crusader origin theory and instead proposes that the term 
Saluba describes a host of groups hailing from different backgrounds, those of al Hasa being of 12th to 13th century CE migrants from southern Persia, and the group to the west being composed of communities emerging after their defeat by the Wahhabis. Another theory sees the Soluba as a former Bedouin group that lost their herds and fell in the eyes of other Bedouin. Arab genealogical tradition Arab traditions relating to the origins and classification of the Arabian tribes is based on biblical genealogy. The general consensus among 14th century Arabic genealogists was that Arabs were three kinds. Perishing Arabs, these are the ancients of whose history little is known. They include Ad, Thamud, Tassim, Jadis, Imlok, and others. Jadis and Tassim perished because of genocide. Ad and Thamud perished because of their decadence. Some people in the past doubted their existence, but Imlok is the singular form of Amalek and is probably synonymous to the biblical Amalek. Pure Arabs. Katanit, these are traditionally considered to have originated from the progeny of Yarub bin Yishjub bin Katan so were also called Katanit Arabs. Arabized Arabs. Adnanite, they are traditionally seen as having descended from Adnan. Modern historians believe that these distinctions were created during the Umayyad period, to support the cause of different political factions. The several different Bedouin tribes throughout Arabian history are traditionally regarded as having emerged from two main branches the Rabi Aa, from which amongst others the Banu Hanifa emerged, and the Mudhar, from which amongst others the Banu Kinana and later Muhammad's own tribe, the Quraysh, emerged. Topic. Religion Religion in pre-Islamic Arabia was a mix of polytheism, Christianity, Judaism, and Iranian religions. Arab polytheism, the dominant belief system, was based on the belief in deities and other supernatural beings such as jinn. Gods and goddesses were worshipped at local shrines, such as the Kaaba in Mecca. The Kaaba was dedicated to Hubal and also contained the images of the three chief goddesses al Lot, al Uzza, and Manat. Some scholars postulate that Allah may have been one of the gods of the Meccan religion to whom the shrine was dedicated, although it seems he had little relevance in the religion. Many of the physical descriptions of the pre Islamic gods are traced to idols, especially near the Kaaba, which is believed to have contained up to 360 of them. Allah was the only god not represented by an idol, other religions were represented to varying, lesser degrees. The influence of the adjacent Roman, Aksumite and Sasanian empires resulted in Christian communities in the northwest, northeast and south of Arabia. Christianity made a lesser impact, but secured some conversions, in the remainder of the peninsula. According to the Bible in Acts chapter 2 verse 11 and Galatians chapter 1 verse 17, Christianity was established first by the early Arab traders who heard the gospel from Peter the Apostle at Jerusalem as well as those evangelized by Paul's ministry in Arabia. Christianity was mostly prominent in Najran, South Arabia. In the latter stages of the pre-Islamic era, Christianity gained converts with some unorthodox sects, such as the Gnostics, having a presence. With the exception of Nestorianism in the northeast and the Persian Gulf, the dominant form of Christianity was Monophysitism. The peninsula had seen Jewish migration since Roman times, which had resulted in a diaspora community supplemented by local converts. Additionally, the influence of the Sasanian Empire resulted in Iranian religions being present in the peninsula. Zoroastrianism existed in the east and south whilst there is evidence of Manichaeism or possibly Mazdakism being practiced in Mecca. Art The art is similar to that of neighboring cultures. Pre-Islamic Yemen produced stylized alabaster the most common material for sculpture heads of great aesthetic and historic charm. Late antiquity The early 7th century in Arabia began with the longest and most destructive period of the Byzantine-Sassanid Wars. It left both the Byzantine and Sassanid empires exhausted and susceptible to third-party attacks, particularly from nomadic Arabs united under a newly formed religion. According to historian George Lishka, the "...unnecessarily prolonged Byzantine-Persian conflict opened the way for Islam." The demographic situation also favored Arab expansion, overpopulation and lack of resources encouraged Arabs to migrate out of Arabia. 
Topic: <laughs> Fall of the Empires. Before the Byzantine-Sassanid War of 602 to 628, the plague of Justinian had erupted 541 to 542, spreading through Persia and into Byzantine territory. The Byzantine historian Procopius, who witnessed the plague, documented that citizens died at a rate of 10,000 per day in Constantinople. The exact number, however, is often disputed by contemporary historians. Both empires were permanently weakened by the pandemic as their citizens struggled to deal with death as well as heavy taxation, which increased as each empire campaigned for more territory. Despite almost succumbing to the plague, Byzantine Emperor Justinian I reigned 527 attempted to resurrect the might of the Roman Empire by expanding into Arabia. The Arabian Peninsula had a long coastline for merchant ships and an area of lush vegetation known as the Fertile Crescent which could help fund his expansion into Europe and North Africa. The drive into Persian territory would also put an end to tribute payments to the Sasanians, which resulted in an agreement to give £11,000 of tribute to the Persians annually in exchange for a ceasefire. However, Justinian could not afford further losses in Arabia. The Byzantines and the Sasanians sponsored powerful nomadic mercenaries from the desert with enough power to trump the possibility of aggression in Arabia. Justinian viewed his mercenaries as so valued for preventing conflict that he awarded their chief with the titles of patrician, philarch, and king, the highest honors that he could bestow on anyone. By the late 6th century, an uneasy peace remained until disagreements erupted between the mercenaries and their patron empires. The Byzantines' ally was a Christian Arabic tribe from the frontiers of the desert known as the Ghassanids. The Sasanians' ally, the Lakhmids, were also Christian Arabs, but from what is now Iraq. However, denominational disagreements about God forced a schism in the alliances. The Byzantines' official religion was Orthodox Christianity, which believed that Jesus Christ and God were two natures within one entity. The Ghassanids, as Monophysite Christians from Iraq, believed that God and Jesus Christ were only one nature. This disagreement proved irreconcilable and resulted in a permanent break in the alliance. Meanwhile, the Sassanid Empire broke its alliance with the Lakhmids due to false accusations that the Lakhmids leader had committed treason. The Sasanians annexed the Lakhmid kingdom in 602. The fertile lands and important trade routes of Iraq were now open ground for upheaval. Topic. Rise of Islam When the military stalemate was finally broken and it seemed that Byzantium had finally gained the upper hand in battle, nomadic Arabs invaded from the desert frontiers, bringing with them a new social order that emphasized religious devotion over tribal membership. By the time the last Byzantine-Sassanid war came to an end in 628, Arabia had started to unite under Muhammad's politico-religious leadership. The Muslims were able to launch attacks against both empires, which resulted in destruction of the Sassanid Empire and the conquest of Byzantium's territories in the Levant, the Caucasus, Egypt, Syria and North Africa. Over the following centuries, most of the Byzantine Empire and the entirety of the Sassanid Empire came under Muslim rule. Within the lifetime of some of the children who met Muhammad and sat on the Prophet's knees, Arab armies controlled the land mass that extended from the Pyrenees Mountains in Europe to the Indus River Valley in South Asia. In less than a century, Arabs had come to rule over an area that spanned 5,000 miles. See also Ancient Near East Arab etymology Arabian mythology History of Saudi Arabia History of the Arabic alphabet History of the United Arab Emirates Incense route Pre-Islamic calendar Soviet Orientalist studies in Islam Women in pre-Islamic Arabia Topic Notes Topic. Further reading Berkey, Jonathan P. 2003, the Formation of Islam, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 978-0-521-58813-3 Bouliot, Richard W. 1975, the Camel and the Wheel, Harvard University Press, ISBN 0-674-09130-2 
Crone, Patricia 2004 Meccan Trade and the Rise of Islam, Blackwell Publishing, republished by Gorgeous Press, ISBN 1-59333-102-9 Donner, Fred The Early Islamic Conquests, Princeton University Press, ISBN 0-691-10182-5 Hotting, G. R. The Idea of Idolatry and the Emergence of Islam, From Polemic to History, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 978-0-521-65165-3 Hoyland, Robert G. 2001, Arabia and the Arabs, From the Bronze Age to the Coming of Islam, Routledge, ISBN 978-0-415-19535-5 Khorataev, Andre Ancient Yemen, Oxford, Oxford University Press, ISBN 0-19-922237-1 Korotayev, Andre Pre-Islamic Yemen, Wiesbaden, Harisovitz Verlag, ISBN 3-447-03679-6 Yule, Paul Allen Himyar die Spatendik im Jemen, Himyar late antique Yemen, Eichwald, Linden, ISBN 978-3-929290-35-6 Arabia Antica, Portal of Pre-Islamic Arabian Studies, University of Pisa, Departamento Civilta e Forme del Sapere.